the same thing? Is, is there nothing not. extra? Is there? I mean, do you have a different view on this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's ridiculous. They, they should get back. I mean, I understand they're sort of front line and they're facing all the people with uh, with you know coronavirus, but I'm assuming the doctor's been jabbed. Mm. Um, and I mean. During the during lockdown, I couldn't go and perform in comedy clubs. I was doing Zoom shows and things. I mean, I can't tell comedy clubs, oh, I don't want to come in. I don't want to come in. I want to do it over Zoom. Did They'll you put a laptop it? on the stool. No, I, I hated Zoom games. It's terrible. Zoom, isn't it? Just <laughs> shouting, at, shouting at my laptop, which is tethered to my mobile phone. So people are getting this sort of jerky you know, thing while I'm telling, great. like, jokes. Great. It's it ridiculous. Did you hear laughter when you made a joke? Or was it silent? It depended. Some of, them, some of them were set up so there could be, like, 200 people watching, but it was silence. Mm. And that was just the... Oh, that's not great, It was, it? yeah, the most ego-destroying thing <laughs> in the world. <laughs> so, yeah, these, these doctors, uh, I, think they should, I think they should get back into, into the surgeries mm. and uh, see people face-to-face. -face. You can't diagnose things over a, over a dodgy 480 pixel webcam. No. You know what I mean? You need to see it with, uh, with your eyes in real life, and, you know. Diagnosis is more than just looking at a, a digital picture. I think, yeah, it, there'll be some conditions that they could carry on that way, but I think, ultimately, they're asking for more money for doing the same thing, mm. or maybe even slightly less. I'm not sure, but I don't see why they should get more money. Uh, now, this... Uh, I love the pregnant emoji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do we have a picture of it? I don't know. We've got a picture of the emoji. I'd love it if we did. Do we have a picture of the emoji? It's amazing. So, basically, uh, you know, the woke progressives... Here we are, the woke progressives... <laughs> <laughs> the overlords that run our tech, the oligarchs, the billionaires have decided it's, it's time for us to be given a, a pregnant man emoji uh, in recognition of the many millions of pregnant men around, <laughs> <laughs> around the UK. I mean, this is, a very, this is catering for a very niche market, pregnant men. This is um, so pregnant this man is uh, trans... Because trans, trans men uh, can, in a lot of cases, uh, get pregnant. Uh, but I mean, we're, we're still it's a vanishingly small um, you know, number of uh, men who are going to actually ha get pregnant. But what, what I love about this emoji is it's obviously only going to be used by men like me to send to our mates to tell them that they're fat. Because it's Ooh, like a it. man with a big belly. It could be useful then, because there's no such thing as a pregnant man. So it could be useful well, for... Well, there, there is a trans man can get pregnant. Because, but, yeah. Well, but then yeah. it's not a pregnant man, is it? Yes, it is. Mm. It's it's a, a man cannot get man. pregnant. No, uh, the definition. But that's a pregnant You don't need to quote man. from the scripture. <laughs> a, 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 a female can transition to being a man. Sure, so. A and then that man sure. who has the, the ovaries and everything can, can get pregnant. But, but biologically, if you still have the ovaries, now you're not still a man. Exactly. No, it's 2021. 20, no, you could be a trans. You what's could be the year got to do with it? Look yeah, at she. It doesn't yeah, matter if it's 40, 41. A man is a man. Yeah, she's a trans man. But he's not a man. But he is he, a man. But biologically, he was a woman. He's now a trans man. But he probably can't get pregnant now as a trans man. A trans man cannot. Well, get a, lot of, a lot of trans men can get pregnant. Well, I'm not sure about you know she specifically, but a lot of trans men and trans men do get pregnant. But I thought if you transitioned, you what couldn't is get going pregnant. On in this class no, if you tr if you transition, you can get pregnant. Right, <laughs> this is this is another world for me. I, so this, I mean, so not, there is such a thing. So, but you do like some trans men uh, have children. So and some trans men they, have children with trans women. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's great to hear your uh, story, Shay, and, you know, it's, it's great you, you, know, you followed that, that path and found happiness, but um, a lot of children, there's been, a, there's been a huge explosion in transitioning over the past, you know, very, very, very few years. Like, the number of gender yeah. clinics in America has gone from one to over 50, and uh, there's been a, you know, a huge explosion in, in Europe as well, and I think we're, we're rushing into this without really the, the data and without really, uh, you know, being a, in an a atmosphere in a society where we can freely debate it. Anybody who, uh, you know, any scientist or researcher who brings out anything that's, that's slightly critical of the explosion in gender transitioning um, is, is denounced as, as transphobic, um, but we really need to, to look at this. If we're, if we're talking about medicating uh, children, particularly when it's things that can have real long-term effects. I, mean, I know you said the puberty blockers uh, can, have, can be reversible um, and, and don't have uh, you know, nasty long-term effects. I mean, that's true if it's, if it's for a short time. Uh, but certainly the hormones, uh, they can lead to all kinds of, uh, of, of nasty things. Osteoporosis, uh, sterility, uh, and then you know, requiring um, invasive medical treatments like hysterectomies. So it can, it can be quite nasty. And, and what we're seeing from, from studies, the studies that have been done between 61% and 98% of children uh, who uh, express intentions of transitioning revert to their natal gender, revert to their, their biological sex. Uh, so I think if, if, we're, 
if we're sort of hurrying children through mm -hmm. this process, we're, we're storing up some problems for, for 10, 15 years down the line when, when you know, I think a significant proportion uh, could well want to, to detransition. Leo, I'm going to come to you first, actually, because you are Scottish. I am Scottish, Nicola yeah. Nicola Sturge, break up the union. Well, I've, I've got a bone to pick with you. You're talking about the English army. I think you'll find it's the British army. Oh, Until yeah, Scotland yeah, gets yeah. independence and the union's broken up. And also, S Scotland has is, is traditionally uh, been hugely overrepresented uh, in the military. So I think 25% of servicemen, or service people, I should say, are Scots. Mm -mm, but she still did call on the English Parliament to sort of help her oh, out. Oh, yeah. Didn't she? Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> OK, you can, you can split, split hairs like that, the SMP, The SNP have been an, an absolute disaster for Scotland, particularly in health. There was a, there was a children's hospital that, uh, you know, took year, was years late and, and millions of pounds over budget uh, opening. It's only opened recently. Uh, drug deaths have, have ballooned. They're literally shooting up. That's not a pun. Uh, in Scotland, uh, they're, they're three and a half times higher than any, anywhere else in Europe. It's, it's ridiculous. We're, we're losing so many people to, uh, to heroin and fentanyl and, and uh, drug abuse. And uh, Sturgeon obviously bungled the vaccine yeah. rollout and yeah, also yeah. had to ask Westminster for help with that uh, and ask for it too late, as she's done with the, with the ambulances. She always uh, treats these things as a political football and actually throws Scottish people under the bus. She's happy to see Scottish people die rather than, you know, admit defeat and admit that she actually needs the union's help. Mm, she does. And it doesn't really look good for the whole idea of Scottish being, Scotland being independent. I mean, I get it, right? You don't want to be ruled by somebody else, but we are united as one, and Scotland does benefit as, uh, quite a bit from being part of the union. And this demonstrates the fact that they're just not really, at this moment, ready for devolved power in that way. What do you think, Calvin? I just don't understand it. I don't understand how she can always blame Westminster but then keep running to them for help every <laughs> single time. It doesn't make any sense to me. If we were devolved, what would she do? Who would mm. she go to for help? Probably the EU, if they let her back in. Or China, well, apparently. Her. China? What, yeah, the, what, she's, the, the SNP were talking about allowing uh, Chinese military bases in what? Scotland oh, gosh. and negotiating <laughs> as, as, a, as a lever to get more money from, uh, from Westminster post-independence. Mm. Sell your soul to the devil. <laughs> you sell your soul to the devil, they're not... Come on, don't be so cruel. I bet your well, actually... blood, blood would be boiling over that one. Though. Oh, my God, God <laughs> forgive me, God knows what she would do. Well, what do yeah, you... but people in the 1920s had hormones. People in famines yeah. have got hormones. Where, where are the fat people sitting around in a famine being like, hey, look at, look at me, uh, it must be my overactive thyroid. No, you don't have an overactive thyroid. You've got an overactive fridge door. <laughs> that's, what, that's what most people's problem is. We need to bring back the concept of personal responsibility, yes, not just when yes. it comes to food, <laughs> but with lots of things. And I think the normalisation and the sort of uh, deification of fatness is dangerous. I'm yeah. seeing it a lot on social media. You see, uh, you know, plus-size women, but I mean, like, really plus-size women, uh, saying, oh, I'm, I'm fat, but I'm beautiful, and everybody's clapping them, saying, oh, you're so bold, you're so brave, you're so beautiful. It's like, you know you're not actually beautiful. If you well, post no, no, saying some, you're beautiful, well, you say that, people agree with people, you. Some people might find that attractive, and there is nothing wrong with being overweight. Oh, there sense. is. It's in terms of... Yeah, a narwhal might find that attractive. In terms of whether you're beautiful or not, because beauty is mm. not actually just on beauty the outside. Beauty is quite objective. But let's, it's, let's, it's come, let's come back to Tam, because fairly objective. I think sometimes yeah. come, when... Come, come back to Tam. back to Tam, what he has to say. You need to come back down to earth, you people. He disagrees with me, and I'm very happy uh, people disagree with me. But there are two problems. The first of all is that uh, I agree totally that you've got to be told the truth. Mm. The problem, however, is that you've got to prepare the ground in which the truth is accepted. If you, if you just say to people you're fat, period, you've lost the plot. And uh, absolutely GPs have got a fundamental responsibility for telling people that their fatness is injurious to their health and they've got to do something about it or they will help them do something about it. Second thing is that you can say to your blue in the face that there are lots of fruit and vegetables around, blah, 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 not in a lot of the country, which are deserts. No, that, I totally disagree. It's so easy to eat healthily. It's cheaper and easier to eat healthily. It depends how many people you're feeding. I don't necessarily... Uh, it depends. I mean, and also... A sack of lentils, a can of chickpeas. You don't even need to yeah. cook chickpeas. A can of chickpeas, so healthy. You eat them yeah, raw. Yeah, but the other problem <laughs> with that... <laughs> ugh. The other problem with fruit and vegetables, no, particularly vegetables, is that people do not know how to cook. Now, you may 
cook. All your friends may know how to cook, but there are a plethora of people who do not know Sorry, how to cook. It's another excuse. We teach food tech in school. We still teach food and nutrition all throughout school. It's just another excuse. Yeah. No. Well, can I mean, of chickpeas, open the chickpeas, what put on plate, eat. Just chickpeas on there, and that sounds like a lot. It's healthier than chips. It doesn't sound very nice, though. And the thing yeah, well, obviously, you can so then you graduate to some, some, some kind like, of sauce can and add in some yeah. vegetables I, and some lean but, meat. Blend it. No, no listen, listen I, I, I myself, I work in nutrition, I'm a fitness expert. I love all that. I mm. love healthy food. And I, when I train people, and, I, and, and I'm not, I am a good trainer, but I'm, I'm too blunt. So most of my clients are men because it's a lot easier, and a lot of the women go running off because <laughs> I will be too blunt and it doesn't work out for and me. That's why I'm asking Tam these questions so I know the answer. I don't know how to deal with it. 